So today we wanted to to share on the base and read the verse number 189 of Radharasa Sudanidi. And of course, there's a connection also to other scriptures like Rata Kripa Kataksham or Vilap Kuzumanjali, verse number 42. And we will also give a little bit light on that if you are greedy for that, of course. <laughs> Very greedy. So then please help. I will just read to my seva and please share whenever you have some inspiration, then please share the nectar with all of us. So I will start with verse number 189, Radharasa Sudanidi. O oh, my mistress Radike, O oh, great illusory potency that enchants the prince of Braj. O oh, you whose eyelids are a naturally flowing vast ocean of the essence of sweet ras. O oh, girl whose glances are melting with compassion. O oh girl, with the sweetly smiling lotus face, please cast a slightly merciful glance on me. Again, O oh my mistress Radike, O oh great illusory potency that enchants the prince of Braj, O oh you whose eyelids are naturally flowing vast oceans of the essence of sweet rasa. O oh girl, whose glances are melting with compassion. O oh girl, with the sweetly smiling lotus face. Please, cast a slightly merciful glance on me. Sri Rata's greatly enchanting, merciful glance. Doravani, this is such a beautiful verse and I thank you for choosing it. Full of emotions, of the maidservant of Srimati Radhika to her Swamini. And I like also that you will put also other nectar songs and you know references because we know from listening to Guruji for so many years how important is all the details of Srimati Radhika's qualities and in this one it is especially her glance. And I also like that she is called the great illusory potency. <laughs> because yeah. usually we know 
it is Maya, but who is the cause of this? She is Mahamaya Yoga Maya. She is Mahabhav Swarupini. She is the origin of all, you know, the powerful Shaktis. And she is enchanting Krishna, the Prince of Braj, who is enchanting everyone. So all this is already such a deep meditation, how she is enchanting the one who is enchanting all of the whole universes. And her eyelids are a vast ocean of the essence of sweet rasa. My God, my Goddess. Just one movement of her eyes are so enchanting for the Dasis, and they look close. Just before the class, Gora Sundara, who was there with Gurudev, was sending me some pictures that Gurudev had looked closely at Swamini's eyes today, at our Swamini's eyes. And he sent me some pictures and he said, look at these pictures. Sometimes Swamini is looking up and sometimes she's looking down. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a miracle? And I thought, oh, it is so sweet to see all her movements and also to see how her dasi, our Guru Manjari, is looking closely to all the details of her movements, of her eyes. And we have this now in this verse. How sweet do her eyes move? And what is she saying with every movement of her eye, of her eyelid, of her eyelashes? These details are so attractive. And then also comes the subject of compassion, that she has so much love and feelings for all her dasis. And we will hear about that, how she is melting with compassion. From my material, mundane mind and consciousness, it is so difficult to understand how someone is melting with compassion. Melt Ding means losing the form. Means coming into another kind of form. The melted heart that brings the tears. Usually when we are melting in our hearts, then we get the tears, right? Like the kirtan of the girls of Raj was melting my heart. And I feel that the tears are coming. And many, many reasons why the tears are coming also inside internal reasons. And so in the same way, our Swamini also, when she sees our all endeavors and all our cries and our little efforts, she also is melting. Her heart is melting. She is watching us. She is alive. She is there. And then now Prabhupada Saraswati is talking to girl. Oh girl, before she was mistress in the first word. Oh my mistress. And then she is oh girl. A sweetly smiling girl. All these girls there down in the basement, they are also so sweetly smiling. They are the Braj Pasis. They are under the special protection and shelter of Srimati Radhika. And we are so lucky that we can serve them in any little way. Because the Braj Pasis, they have these feelings that we are yearning for naturally in their heart. They are sharing them with us also. We can serve them and they also serve us, sharing their love, sharing their 
good luck to be born as a Brajbasti, for example. Many things coming. So I just want to go a little bit into the purport because the purport is already, I mean, the the verse, because the verse is already so sweet. It's dripping, and thank you for choosing this. I was longing for some dripping emotions. <laughs> thank you that I could choose that verse. It's your mercy. So I will read a little bit of the commentary, and if you feel that you want to share on that, then please do so. Srila Anandadas Babaji, in his mercy, is giving wonderful comments on this. In external consciousness, Sripad humbly considers his own unworthiness for attaining Sri Radhika's mercy. Feeling unable to slacken his ordinary moods, he thinks, I am not fixed in worshipping Sri Rata's lotus feet with determination. How can I attain this most precious devotional service? Suddenly, the remembrance of Sri Radhika's mercy lights up his heart, which is darkened by despair. So, Gauravani, I want to also, sorry to interrupt you here, but it is so, it, when I read the verse, the first uh, sentence, it is so deep, because that is my position every day. Every day I pray that my moods will become, you know, more higher and slacken, you know, the ordinary moods. That mercy will come, that some feelings come and some deeper, deeper feelings. Not only for myself, but for Swamini. Usually I am used to feel, you know, good for myself. But what does that have to do with my goal? <laughs> it's a mercy already to, to have a good feeling, a happiness feeling in this world, yes. But really what I aspire is that my ordinary moods of complacency and, uh, you know, feeling of unworthiness, feeling of not good enough, and feeling of I have to do more, if they can be a little bit uplifted, then I can maybe become more determined to serve Srimati Radhika. So this is my position that Baba is explaining here and describing that I need to every day pray and I want to. It's not I need to. I want to. I can. I have the good luck. I am so fortunate that my Gurudev has given the service of Srimati Radhika to me. Now every day I pray for this upliftment of the moods, of the ordinary, of these you know, mundane feelings. Mundane, I don't feel, is for me um, to go to the, to the uh, how do you say, cinema or to watch TV. It's not that uh, these things, I don't even consider them an obstacle anymore. I just want to see Swamini everywhere. This is the upliftment of the moods. If I can see her everywhere, then what is there, you know, what kind of obstacle could there be? And the things that we are doing, I am doing in the day, they all become service. They are already in a way, but every day I pray that they become more intense and I can have a closer relationship to my Swamini.
And I remember when Gurudev always tells us about his, you know, divine moods when he got the mercy from Radha Govinda Das Babaji Maharaj. Even when he went to the televisions or to the to the cinema, he would only see Radha and Mohan everywhere. He was crying. This is the. There is no more consideration of unworthiness. That was an overwhelming experience, and I always love to hear you about this, Gurudev. How you were living in this ecstasy of being always so close to Swamini that in every, you know, moment you were with her, and I know you are with her. So we're praying for. A drop of mercy of this. Please, everyone, share on this. It's such a deep point. May I, Sri Radhe Radhe? Please. Yes, Sudevi, please come. Yes, isn't it also about giving up uh, our feeling of unworthiness? Because Sri Radha is the ocean of compassion. And um, her glances are merciful. And perhaps um, because we are here, um, we only have to, we also only have to melt this. Um, um, in, to, it's nothing, not a question of doing. It's a question of letting go, of relax, of um, opening, only opening, and, and no endeavor, effortless, breathing, feeling, feeling the exchange in breathing. It's an in and out, a waving. I can't stop breathing. I am breast breathed. Um, the mercy is is there, and uh, perhaps it is a big question of ego. If I say I am not worthy, who I am to say this? <laughs> Jai Sri Radhe. Thank you for your comment here. Yeah? And I would like to add on that, what you said. Because I feel that Tripad, his feeling of considering himself unworthiness is not coming from that platform, which maybe we would feel. It's another platform. It's if somebody is loving you so much that you cannot even get a glimpse or frame of that, you cannot get a picture of what kind of great love it is, and you are flooded by that love again and again. It's melting your heart so much that you think, how? How it could be that someone is loving me so much? I'm so unworthy of that. Because it's such a great love. Even Krishna himself thinks that he's unworthy of Radharani's love. Even the gopis' love, he thinks, I cannot pay it back. But what to speak of Radharani's love? So this humbleness and this feeling of unworthiness is emanating out of this pure, highest, loving exchange. It's a part of that love.
Maybe Guranga Sundara or Chayananda does want to add something, or maybe Gurudev, I cannot see him now, but maybe he's also there. Tarun Baba is there, and please everyone just jump in. If somebody loves me, that by the way, he is slack in all my problems, all my bad feelings. Just by the way, through his love, is melting out of compassion. Not the heart is melting, the whole person is melting out of compassion. Where you can see such a thing? Not in this world. In this world you may not even see hearts melting nowadays. So Radharani's love is so great that we cannot even get the slightest idea of that. It's just natural that the devotee feels completely unworthy of that love. And this makes the exchange of love even more sweet. Oh, Radhe. Jai Radhe. I think in the moment hearing is more in joy than speaking. And I'm so thankful that uh, I can hear you. You speak this wonderful, beautiful vision and Radha and thank you very much. Thank you for your sweet words, Madhuri. <laughs> Madhuri, always sweet. Guru you just inspired to me to relish this Baba's words more deeper, actually. Of course, we can understand these words from one level, external level, but Baba is saying external consciousness. So it means that Prabhupada Saraswati is deeply conscious about his spiritual identity, inner identity. And this person who is deeply conscious about his Swarup, spiritual identity, when he is on the external consciousness, again consciousness, he never forget his spiritual identity, then natural humility appears in his heart. And his feeling that he is unworthy is very humble, natural, and in that how it's going on then, from this un feeling of unworthiness, he is praying to Radhika. I don't want ordinary moods. I don't want to swim in different moods, in different bhavas. I want only to be conscious and deeply absorbed in Manjari Bhav to serve you. I want to forget all other ordinary moods because I have my desirable 
exclusive Manjari mode, which I want to attain. And this is my prayer to you, my dear Swamini. Because many devotees, pure devotees, have prema, have a pure love for their ish to live. And according to the quantity of their love, they are situ situated in close relationship with their Ishtadev. But this unique position of Manjaris is such sublime and unique position that someone who is striving to attain that position, he wants to forget all these moods. For him, all these moods are ordinary bhavas. Because he wants to attain and take shelter only in Manjari bhava. And he is praying, I am not fixed in Radha's uh, worshipping Srimati Radharani. I am not fixed. He is speaking it from external consciousness. Why he is speaking this? Because he has only one goal, one pointed goal. I want to be fixed in Radha's, but Radha's lotus feet, but he is crying and praying for this precious devotional service. And all these words is not on a dharmic platform of compassion. It's not on a dharmic platform of Radhika, who is Supreme Personality of Godhead or Goddess. She is my mistress, my Swamini, my beloved worshipper, only one, my heart. And from that position, when devotee is in his external consciousness, he feels unworthy. And this kind of unworthiness is a rasa. It is a rasa. It's not materialistic feeling that I'm low, I'm unworthy or everything. When someone who is really consciousness, his feelings, his heart, his consciousness is always rasa. Otherwise, if we don't understand that this is a rasa, prayer from the level of rasa, we will always be on a dharmic mood under the gunas of material nature. External consciousness, Shripad humbly considers his own unworthiness. He is not talking that he is Prabodhananda Saraswati. We should understand he is not talking from that level that I am Raghunath Das or Rupa Goswami or Prabodhananda Saraswati. I am such and such Manjari, beloved made servant of my Radha. And because I am in external consciousness, I'm crying and I feel unworthy. This is the sign of prema, it's not the sign of dharma and bodily consciousness of life. So, when and then Baba is saying, feeling unable to slacken ordinary moods. And each devotee, especially in the beginning, he passed through these different stages of ordinary moods. And someone who is enough fortune to define what is my mood, he wants to forget all these moods. I don't want, I don't have a taste for that. 
And for that, I'm praying and crying and I feel unworthy. Because I cannot slacken these ordinary moods. Please help me. My only desire is to be engaged in your devotional service. And I feel myself very pitifully that I'm not fixed. And I'm crying from your glance. I cannot serve you. I cannot think on you. I cannot do anything for you, but please, Radha Kripa Kataksha, please give me your merciful glance, because Kripa is going through glance also, my dears. All emotions, Radhika's, are going from her heart and all body through her eyes. So natural feeling of her devotee is, I am completely unworthy. And this is rasa. Radhe, Radhe, sorry. Radhe, Radhe, I think you made it very clear. We also may consider that the ordinary moods are different. It depends on our personal stage where we are. His ordinary moods of Srila Prabhupada and Nazaraswati are already very high. When he is not in the direct service, then he feels himself completely unworthy. Like you got something and then you are losing it again and you find yourself again in your sadaka. And then immediately you cry. That means I'm unworthy. Otherwise, I could stay and serve and go on. Thank you very much, Goranga Sundara. You made it very, very clear from all different uh, views. So, Srila Das Babaji is going on in this mood we were just talking about. Suddenly, the remembrance of Sri Radhika's mercy lights up his heart, which is darkened by despair. So the mercy of Radharani is giving him hope. And this is the light in the heart. Life is coming back. And actually this is also our hope. Our hope is not that, oh yes, I'm qualified. You know, I, I can remember ten verses of Bhagavad Gita and I'm so fixed in my ordinary service. I'm, you know, giving three aratis a day and chanting 64 rounds or whatever. Whatever it may be, I'm so qualified. No. My qualification is the mercy of Radharani, the mercy of my mistress. If my mistress is not merciful, I have no chance. So the hope in the heart is the mercy. The mercy of Radharani is the hope. There is no other hope for me. I think it's also <clears throat> very important to remember how I'm always saying the same thing. It's always important to remember. 
such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful explanation by Goranga Sundara. Thank you so much, Goranga Sundara. This was wonderful, straight from the heart. I think it's also very important to add that how can we be getting this mercy? And the only way we can get the Kripa of Radhika is by Gurudev. So I just wanted to say this, that the lotus feet of Gurudev is our pipeline straight into our heart, either as Gurudev or as Guru Manjari. So this wonderful Radha Kripa, this mercy which is actually from the eyes, lucky are those who can see the eyes of Swamini, I can't, <laughs> but I can see the lotus feet of Gurudev, which is Shri Guru Charana Padma, which is also very, very powerful. So when we always remember the lotus feet of Gurudev, we always remember the mercy of Swamini. Jai Ho. Thank you, Tarun Baba, for your mercy. Always nice to hear you again and again. So Srila Ananda Das Babaji is going on. The aspirants should be absorbed in hoping for the Lord's mercy in a similar way. I think this is a very important statement also <laughs> in a is doing something some disconnection was I see yeah okay yes so, maybe one or two sentences Yes. So it will not fall from the sky if we just sitting there and make like this, turning the thumbs. <laughs> so we should endeavor, of course, in the way Srila Prabhupada the six Goswamis actually showing us. So we should endeavor in the same way, follow them. And then also hope in the same way. Back for the mercy of them, because they have it already. 